She's your noisy. <laughs> All right, you're live. Okay, good. Well, welcome to the Board of Park Commissioners meeting jointly with the Recreation Board uh, for Tuesday, April 6th. Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers. I'm here. Mr. Emmerich. Here. Mrs. Westfall. Here. Mr. Hobart. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Jackson. Here. Mrs. Reed. Mr. Herman. Okay, thank you very much. We have the uh, Park Board minutes in front of us for our March 1st meeting. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to those minutes? None here. None. Is that a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. All second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Very good. They're accepted. Thank you. Uh, we have our reports. Mr. Drake, do you, you want to get us started? Sure. Uh, just a couple things in addition to what you have in front of you. Uh, we completed the dog park uh, benches install last week or uh, I think the week before, actually. Uh, we received a nice thank you letter uh, from Bill and Susan Whitten, a uh, handwritten letter, uh, just thanking us for that amenity and what that's added to the, the dog park there. And so we appreciate that and uh, appreciate the guys that were able to get that done so timely. Uh, the exercise, the Pella uh, grant that purchased the exercise equipment, uh, that equipment is, is, has been delivered. It's sitting in our shop right now. So we anticipate as soon as we can get uh, Dalton Concrete out to do the pad, that uh, construction of that um, apparatus will start very shortly here. Um, the farm lease, the Hills Camp, former Hills Camp farm lease is open for public bid. Uh, that's open until April 13th. Uh, I met with one farmer today to look at the property, uh, kind of go over it. And he was actually going to pull some soil samples. So uh, looking forward to getting, getting that, uh, those bids in. Um, and I think, oh, um, no, I think we're going to go over the kayak launch here uh, under new business. So I think that's all I have for my report. Speaking of the Holzkamp farm, is the uh, Miami County Park District in there? Um, project they have out there ongoing or is it completed? It is still ongoing right now, uh, nearing completion. The main channel is in, and from what I understand, they're working on the connecting, uh, what they call scour channels. So, uh, and then um, doing some seeding and, and some actual uh, pollinator habitat type things as well. So that's ongoing, but, but will soon be wrapping up. Is that going to have any impact on Duke Park or our property on the Hills Camp Farm? Not it in should. any negative way. It just uh, benefits the, the ability for wildlife viewing and, and possible uh, opportunities down the road, maybe. Good. Great. Any uh, questions of Mr. Drake? Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Drake. Thank you. Tyler, good afternoon to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, Things are off to a, a really, really good start for us. Excuse uh, me, Kyler. I, I was asking oh. Mr. Siler to report. Sorry. Oh, Siler. Sorry, I heard Kyler. That, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't enunciate. My fault. <laughs> I can't. Sorry about that. I thought you said Kyler as well. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, in addition to our report, we're, we're uh, becoming best friends with the health department. We continue to work with them on a daily basis, uh, just planning a lot of our events that we have here. Um, We've, we, we're just uh, in the process of removing the ice here over the last couple of days. And um, we've got a couple of things happening this month. Most of these events have been modified significantly with a lower number of people in attendance at any given time and maybe stretched out over longer periods of time. But we've got, um, we got an event here later in the month with the Irish Dance Festival or not festival, but a Irish dance event that we have here every year. Um, we've got a couple other events in, in May before we get to our graduation ceremonies. That's, that's what's taking a lot of time right now is planning for these graduation events with each of the schools and how many graduates we can accommodate along with how many guests uh, they're going to be permitted to have in attendance for each of their ceremonies. So we're working on that. Um, in addition, the last couple of days, we've just been working on starting to get uh, things cleaned up over at the pool in preparation for that uh, to start uh, 
start for training and um, filling and getting that all ready to roll so we can shoot to, to open on Memorial Day weekend as we typically do. So we know there'll be some modifications to that operation, but they won't be uh, nearly as significant as they were last season. Good. Well, thank you for all your hard work out there. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Seiler? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Boer. Hey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Anything to add to your report, sir? <clears throat> Um, well, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, things are, things are really, uh, coming along for us. It's been a great start to the year. Uh, March was a, um, pretty good month as far as uh, the weather goes. And, and that really led to us getting off to a, um, a very fast start. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, we did more rounds in March than, uh, than we've done the first three marches I've been here. <laughs> so, uh, that was a, a nice, a nice surprise in that way. And, and April, obviously, the good weather's continued, and so we're we're uh, uh, very busy. Uh, so that's uh, that's good. Um, uh, as far as anything to add, um, so there was a couple months back, I think, where we had at least discussed uh, or made mention of uh, equipment sitting outside uh, at the at the uh, maintenance garage. Uh, and at the time, I, I kind of answered that to the best of my ability, as far as the you know that it was uh, an aesthetic problem. Um, and that, uh, you know, more of a, a visual distraction than anything else. And since that time, I've had a chance to, you know, talk to uh, Ryan down there and learn a little bit more about sort of the, the history of that particular situation. Um, it was, and it's been my understanding now that there was at least discussion when, you know, Ken Green was here about, and I think it even made its way onto the CIP at one point about looking at, uh, adding a, uh, another maintenance garage, or at least adding on to what's, uh, what's currently there. Um, and so, you know, after really kind of digging a little bit deeper and talking with him, I mean, there seems to be, uh, at least the, the need to explore that, um, when you look at, you know, you know, he talks a lot about, um, the, with what's sitting outside, we do run into a problem, uh, that, you know, that equipment really, the lifespan gets shortened quite a bit by the fact that it's, you know, subject to the elements. Uh, so from that perspective, you know, we get a lot of those pieces of equipment, I think, are, are not being utilized to their fullest extent. Um, and we do have, you know, in talking with him about, I would say, as far as purchase price, about fifty to $60,000 worth of equipment that sits outside uh, on a regular basis. Most of that are, are attachment pieces to uh, equipment that is stored inside. Um, and then just kind of going through, you know, what they go through on a daily basis with, uh, with what's inside. Um, you know, they, they're pretty well packed out. And I don't know if you've ever been in that in that building, but you know, there's, there's a lot of maneuvering that goes on to really just store what we do have. Um, and, you know, for them, there's, you know, when they bring stuff out on a daily basis, I mean, there are times where um, just the logistically, you know, they do have to move two or three pieces of equipment to get out just to get to the one that they're actually wanting to use. And, um, and on top of that, we do have some equipment that we even store offsite uh, down at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we have three or four pieces of equipment, not, the, not ones that get used on a regular basis, but, you know, those are ones that uh, our top dresser, we have a couple of plows that get stored down there as well as, uh, as an old triplex mower. So, um, you know, that's really just kind of led to and in talking with Ryan, he also says that, you know, there's some issues with fertilizer storage on his end where, uh, you know, he has to basically space out his orders because he doesn't have enough storage room uh, to, to actually store what he needs to have on hand. So he's kind of has to space out his, his uh, fertilizer orders. So, um, and in addition with the new building, you know, we have, and we're just doing a lot more business than we, than we did before. Uh, we sort of have run into a storage issue on our end. Uh, where, you know, particularly with uh, when I get when I get pro shop, you know, equipment or uh, stuff that comes in, you know, I've got to basically turn my office into a storage area to accommodate all that stuff until I can get it into uh, until I can get it into inventory. So um, and, you know, we've pretty well maximized the storage space that the building, you know, came with uh, with our cleaning supplies and everything that uh, uh, that the shoreline needs to operate as well. So uh, with that being said, I just, you know, would like to maybe at least look into uh, what it would take to, to add in uh, uh, another garage down there, I guess. Well, I've been receiving some comments from some coffers too, that 
as uh, nice as a, a quality of, of uh, a property that is out there to have the tractors sitting outside in view of the golfers is yes, it's aesthetic, perhaps, uh, perhaps harmful to the equipment, but uh, as far as the golfers are concerned, they don't want the aesthetics either. Sorry, Jen, I'm in a park board meeting right now, but I, I'll, I, I'll get to you here in a second. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Had no, questions. that's okay. I, I'm just saying that uh, I agree with you. Perhaps um, Jordan, Susan, do either one of you have any problems with him investigating the uh, cost and uh, uh, specs for a garage? No, I, I kind of brought that up the first time. I thought it was a little ridiculous that things were sitting, sitting outside, but I thought it was on one of the plans down the road to put up some other kind of building or add to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, obviously we've, we've done a lot and the city's done a lot in the last couple of years to make this a more welcoming place to come to and, and to really, you know, enhance the, uh, enhance the visual. And I think with that has come, you know, a lot of, a lot of new business uh, as a result of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, as far as to directly to address, you know, your question there, Sue, um, I think it was at one point, I mean, and on a CIP and I think it's, gotten pushed back, uh, you know, seem, seemingly that it gets pushed back every year to, you know, accommodate um, other more pressing needs, I think, you know, as far as uh, equipment and things like that. So, um, but it was, and again, I wasn't here the, the first time it was on a CIP, um, but I mean, it is something that I think was looked at before, but maybe just got shelved for whatever reason. Well, why don't we do this? Uh, we don't need to take any action to have you go out and look at this information, you know, find us a proposal, uh, get some specifications. Uh, if you have to hire an architect, then that will require some sort of park board action to authorize you to do that. But uh, maybe you and Ryan ought to get together and start that process. Uh, and then once we get a proposal or specifications for a proposal, uh, then we can go ahead and see if we can scour up some money someplace and we'll have to work with the financial arm of the city to see what, uh, what would be available out there at that time? How's that? That's yeah, that's fine. I mean, in, in my talk with him, you know, he did mention that it was years ago, I think when more closer to when he first started, maybe seven or eight years ago, that he did gather some quotes, uh, which obviously, you know, wouldn't mean anything now, but, but yeah, I mean, we have maybe a, at least a, a little bit of a head start and contacting some of those companies and, and having them maybe res, resubmit some quotes of what it would, what it would take to put a building down there. Would you need plumbing out there? Uh, for this other building or uh, just electric? Uh, that, that I, I wouldn't be able to answer that right now. Yeah. Um, okay. I'd have to, I'd have to get, you know, a little bit more, more deep into that. Okay. Well, why don't you put that on your uh, list of things to do and, and uh, then get back to us with what your findings are. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kyla. Any, questions, uh, any further questions for Kyla? No. No. Comment, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Titterington. Um, so uh, before we get too far ahead on the uh, uh, building slash extension slash architect, uh, Kyler, we really need to sit down and discuss this because um, it's really not an off budget cycle item. Uh, depending on the scope of the project, uh, it was on the long term CIP. We'd have to look and see if it had gotten extended. We did talk about not building a new building out there, but uh, adding on to and at least having some kind of a canopy uh, with an additional padded, uh, concrete padded area out there uh, so that we could cover and keep some of the outdoor equipment at least under cover of the elements um, and out of sight, out of mind. So we'd have to resurrect all of that information. I don't know how much an architect would need to be involved. But again, if an architect does become involved, then you, you could be talking about some, uh, some serious, serious enough money uh, in and of itself from a design standpoint before you even got into uh, construction. So just like- well, Mr. Uh, Yeah. Mr. Terrington, I'd ask you to work closely with, with Kyler to, Take a look at those proposals and, and uh, see what we can do. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Drake, that, that brings up an issue with you and, and uh, the park board. Do we have any equipment sitting outside? 
Uh, we have some. We I lost Jeremy there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Jeremy, would you start your answer again, please? You uh, buffered. Do we lose him completely? <laughs> Jeremy, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I think he's. Jeremy, don't be shy. Tell us all about it. <laughs> I just he just jumped off I'm sure I'll jump back just, on just, okay this is Doug Jackson I'm still on and able to see and hear you guys yeah but I, I, I've lost uh, Abby and Sue and Patrick yep okay well, we'll give them a few minutes to get back on and, and in the meantime, we can solve the city's problems. How's that? <laughs> Sue, why don't you take the lead on that, okay? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Probably don't want to know what I do, but. <laughs> Doug, this never happens at your meetings, right? <laughs> you know, we're, uh, we're actually meeting in person, so no. <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody in your household gotten uh, the vaccinations, Doug? No, we have not, Alan. Susan, have you gotten yours? Both of them? No, no, but I had it, so I'm not worried about it right now. I'd rather see the people that can't can't get it yet get it before I do. I've got both of mine. Uh, didn't have any repercussions, so no side effects, so that's good. I feel a little safer. You know, they still don't know whether or not I can transmit it, however. So uh, I'm still wearing masks as a respect for somebody else. And it really doesn't, it's not a guarantee that you're protected either, right. you know, right. but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's no different than getting it. You do build immunity. So mentally, I feel safer. I know. <laughs> so we, we have Ken back now. I think we're missing... Missing Patrick, Mr. Mr. Drake. Can we send Patrick a text or a email? I don't know. If... Yeah. He's the one running this thing, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised he can actually not be on, but we. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Zoom is coming back up, but I would guess that the Facebook stream also went down. There he is. What's that? I'm froze up. Okay. What happened. Then Patrick, you guys are on mute right now. Okay. Um, I don't know. Our our Wi-Fi just went completely down. Our system went completely down and just came back up. Go ahead. I'll give this to you. All right. Sorry about that. So start all over. Well, we're, we were to Jeremy, uh, and Jeremy's not back on yet. Oh, he, yeah, he's got kicked off too. Oh, uh, let me see, because he might be waiting for me. Yeah, three people are. There we go. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. We really didn't like your answer, so we cut you off. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Problems for everybody. I thought my, you, I thought I crashed on my end. I wasn't sure what happened. You want to try your answer again? We didn't hear any of it. Do you have any equipment sitting outside? Yeah, so uh, not really equipment. We have a few trailers at Duke Park that do sit outside in a fenced in, a locked uh, fenced in area. Uh, as far as mowers, tractors, that type of thing, everything's inside. Uh, occasionally a pickup truck or, or a dump truck might have to sit out at our shop on Adam Street uh, next to Hobart Arena, but outside of that, everything is usually inside. Okay, very good. Thank you. Returning to the agenda then, uh, Mr. Brewer, you didn't have anything else to discuss? Nothing else to add. Okay. 
Uh, I don't have a planning commission report. New business. Uh, Mr. Kegley, are you still there? Did you want to discuss the recommendation for the uh, NatureWorks grant? Or is that you or is that somebody else? I can start. Uh, okay. We're talking about, uh, do you have all the, the um, kind of the overhead and the layout of, of the parking lot itself? Yes. This is right off of, um, of uh, East 41, right at the right Broadway Bridge. Yes. Yep. So, so we've recognized as we continue to, to promote uh, connectivity to the river and the, uh, the bike trail and the trail system, we want to kind of formalize that as an, uh, an entry point into the river. We already recognize that on any given weekend, uh, both sides of 41 get lined with cars. There are some uh, steps that somebody is somewhere along the line has put in on the riverbank to help get kayaks and canoes and so forth down to the water level. So really this is all about just one, making it safer uh, for the kayakers and, and uh, canoers to offload. They can actually get further off of 41 and uh, really just formalize that area as a put in that we can we can market that, we can advertise that, we can say we've got in addition to, you know, Treasure Island and uh, some of the other places that people are going to put into, we can actually advertise this as, and promote this as something that we would, we would now have. Um, in addition to the parking lot, uh, there is a, I think you've got an image of a rack. Yes. So what happens right now as, as a kayaker myself, when, when my wife and I Typically, we put in right at this location, and we'll have to drive a, a takeout vehicle to Tip City or Vandalia, wherever it might be, that we're going to take out of the river. And so this is going to allow, that rack will allow people a way to lock their kayaks and lock their gear to something and secure it while they take their, um, while they take their takeout vehicle further downstream. So that, when you think of kayak rack, it's not like we build at Treasure Island where it's an actual rack that the kayaks will sit on. This is more of a, it'll be cemented into the ground and allow a place to, to use a cable or some type of a lock uh, to secure gear to. So that's basically the gist of it. Again, just as we want to continue to promote connectivity to the river, uh, we want to more formalize the area that people are already using really, really regularly. So um, I think with that, either Stan or myself can hopefully answer any questions you might have um, about that. Let me ask you a question. The, the agenda shows a parts A and B. A is uh, recommending to city council that uh, it authorizes the submittal of an application grant. B is the authorization for the construction of the parking lot. Isn't that kind of the cart before the horse type of thing? Don't, don't we need to know whether or not we have the grant before we authorize the construction of the parking lot? Or am I missing something? Dan, do you want to touch on that or Mr. Titterington? Yeah, uh, if you read B, it says that you would authorize the construction if the grant is approved. Okay. So it's just saving us a step to have to come back. We can do this all at once in two different motions. A provisional approval. Provision, conditional. Right? Okay, gotcha. What's the timeline look like? Realistically, Nikki's working on the grant and it's due in, and I believe, in June 1st. June 1st, the application's due. And we would have the funding. If, if the application's funded, we would have it available for construction in the spring of next year. Oh, okay. How much is the application for? Have you gotten a uh, proposal on the preparation of the parking lot? Roughly, yeah. it's $35,000 and there's a 25% matching fund from the city. Yes. And do we, do we, does the city have those funds for this purpose? Uh, we uh, yeah, so the total cost of the grant, uh, the application is 38. We, uh, we would pay 25% of that. Um, so that would give us a $9,500 match that we would take out of the general government account. Okay. Okay. Susan, Jordan, do you have any other questions? No. no. Do you want to take any action on this matter? Yeah, I'll make a, uh, a motion. Uh, so it's going to authorize construction of the parking lot and on park property if the grant is approved and recommend that Troy City Council authorizes submittal 
of the grant application to OD and R for the Nature Works grant to construct the parking lot and locking racks. <laughs> Very well put. I like that. And I'll second that. that. <laughs> okay, there's, there's a motion to second. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Gappers? Yes. Mr. Emmerich? Yes. Mrs. Leftball? Yes. Motion approved. Good. Okay, uh, the next matter on the agenda is the award of a contract for rough mowing at Miami Shores. Uh, Kyler, is that something that you want to discuss? You're, you're muted, Kyler, you're muted. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, uh, we went through that process of, uh, of you know, getting, getting bids. Um, uh, we were, I think one bid came in and um, it's the, uh, company that currently uh, currently mows uh, the rough for us, and so um, I'm. I mean, it, I, I, everything is good on our end, I guess, uh, as far as that goes. So. Okay, well, there's only one bid that came in, and full disclosure, who is that bid? Uh, that bid is uh, Fallview Land Improvements, uh, a company run by uh, Mike Maniachi. Okay, and he's is he currently employed with us? That's correct. Okay, so he would be doing this not on our time, though, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yes, and uh, Mr. Cappers, uh, he will sign a, a disclosure affidavit uh, so that we have everything cleaned up as far as the state of Ohio uh, per Grant Kerber's uh, recommendation. Good. Great. Good. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to go ahead and award the contract to Fallview Mowing for the rough mowing at Miami Shores Golf Course um, based on $800 per mow mowing. Is there a second to that motion? I can I'll second that. Nope. Either one. Okay, <laughs> Mrs. Westfall seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mr. Emmerich? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jackson, does the rec board have anything they want to discuss or talk about? No, Ken, Ken did a good job covering what we're working through right now as we continue to uh, just address the, some of the restrictions that we have within the arena and prepare for the Troy Aquatic Park opening this year. So those are primary on our radar. Okay, thank you. Uh, does staff have anything else that uh, they want to discuss? Yes, I do. Yeah, go, go right ahead. Um, we asked that the board approve a list of events on public uh, park property earlier this year. Uh, we'd like to add a concert, which would be on June 18th, would be the kickoff for the sculptures on the square. Uh, it would be a concert at Pontrati Plaza at Quadrant in the evening. The concert would actually be sponsored by Hainer. Hainer is one of the uh, partners in the concerts downtown. Uh, the musical entertainment will be provided by Amber, Harvey, and the Who's Who. So we just would like to add that to your list of approved events at this point, if we could. Okay, I will so move. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It stands approved. Thank you, for, Sue, for bringing that to our attention. Um, anything else? The, the, the commissioners want to talk about anything. I just wanted to ask, Jeremy, I haven't seen them yet, but the kayak lockers that were put in at Treasure Island, um, I'd just like to know about them. Are they covered? Can you secure your kayak there? Yeah. What do those so look like? Look so that, uh, those are actually racks. Uh, there are two sets of, of racks and they're immediately south of the Smith Boathouse, kind of tucked up okay. right against the boathouse or really near to it. Okay. Um, there is a, a, a long, sorry, you still have me? Okay. Yes. So there's a long cable that's attached bolted to each rack. Uh, we have a total of 12 slots. Six of those 12 we're reserving for float troy tent rentals so 
uh, as we rent tents out, people, six of those uh, will go to those people that are renting tents to store their kayaks. The additional six are open from April 1st, uh, I believe through the end of September, I want to say. Um, I need to check on that. End of September, beginning of October, somewhere in there is the season that the, these rentals are going to run. Um, and the only thing, you need to bring your own lock. So you rent a specific rack. You'll get a number that goes on your kayak that coincides with the number on the rack. And that is your designated spot for your kayak. Um, the, the renter is responsible for monitoring water conditions. If we start to get into where we're going to have a flood, um, they're responsible to come and remove their kayaks if they so choose. Um, but basically, uh, it's, it's one kayak per rack, uh, coinciding with that number. And all you have to do is bring your lock and, and secure it and your kayak can be there. Or canoe, uh, can be there for the season. And, and those are in place, ready to rent. And they are covered. Or they are not. They are not covered. No, it is uh, oh. just outside of the the balcony overhang. Um, so, and because of the height to allow three tiers high, we weren't able to actually tuck it up underneath the overhang. Um, so there is no cover. But we, you know, the idea is that you would store your canoe or kayak upside down so that it wouldn't hold water um, and would still be secure on the rack. Okay. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Okay, hearing nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Capper, like I'm sorry, who said something? What? I did. Um, so, we need you and Susan to please come in and sign the contract with all of you mowing, if you can today or first thing in the morning so we can have our uh, contractor vote this week. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll stop in sometime tomorrow morning. How's that? That's fine. We'd love to see you. Okay. Uh, I, I will try to get there today because I can't do it. I have to be at work at seven, so. <laughs> okay, we can arrange to be here at seven if that's necessary. Not a problem, before seven. Okay. Or I can bring okay. it to you tonight. Yeah, okay. I, it'll probably be easier for me to go tonight okay. because I, I have to be at work at seven. All right. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn has been approved. Thank you very much for your attendance. Everybody have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.